Alrighty, let's look at a kind of a different view of this brain. We've got a um, coronal section here. So on this we can see the gray and white matter. In this case, the cortex, which is gray matter, is highlighted in the colors. So that thin outer rim would be all the cortex. And all of this grayish stuff in the middle is your white matter. You can see your corpus callosum commissural fibers going across to the other side. This is your thalamus here. This is your optic nerve with optic chiasm. Here's your pituitary gland. This is the corona radiata. This is your caudate nucleus. Temporal lobe, frontal lobe. This, all of this space in here is lateral ventricle. Okay, so now before we go onto the cranial nerves and look at a little more detail, I want to do it again on this brain. So here's your cerebral hemispheres, your longitudinal fissure, cerebellum, central sulcus, precentral gyrus in pink, postcentral gyrus in blue, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, and a lobe I forgot before was the insula, which I don't think we could see on the other colored brain, but we'll, we'll find that. Let's open this guy up. Cingulate gyrus, corpus callosum, septum pellucidum, fornix, epithalamus, pineal gland at the end, thalamus, the egg with the endothalamic adhesion, hypothalamus here, anterior commissure, posterior commissure in yellow. At the end of the hypothalamus you have mammillary body, you'd have your infundibulum with your pituitary here, and your optic chiasm, optic nerve. Midbrain, cerebellar, or cerebral peduncle, excuse me, superior colliculus and inferior colliculus of the corpora quadrigemina. Behind the septum pellucidum, you'd have lateral ventricle. Surrounding this diencephalon, you'd have third ventricle. Here's your cerebral aqueduct. Here's your fourth ventricle and central canal. Pons, medulla oblongata, cerebellum, Arbor vitae in white. Temporal lobe again, cerebellum, pons, middle cerebellar peduncle, superior and inferior cerebellar peduncle. Medullary olive, pyramids with the decusation. See the hash marks there. Cingulate gyrus, corpus callosum, lateral ventricle, caudate nucleus, fornix again. Here's your pituitary on this one, mammillary body. Corpus callosum going across, gray matter cortex, white matter, corona radiata, caudate nucleus, corona radiata, cerebral peduncle from the midbrain, pituitary gland, optic nerve, optic chiasm here in the middle, cerebellar peduncle. There's your corpora quadrigemina, your colliculus there. Okay, let's look at these structures again here on a different brain. This is one of the better brains that we have. It has everything on it that you could possibly imagine, well, except meninges. So we're going to run through the stuff we already talked about, and then we'll look at cranial nerves. Cerebrum, two hemispheres, longitudinal fissure. On this guy, this is your central sulcus here, precentral gyrus, postcentral gyrus. <clears throat> we 
we can take these off and of course you have frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe here. You can see more frontal lobe, more occipital lobe. This is your temporal lobe here on the sides. You can see here and here, temporal lobe. On this one we can see the insula, so we've taken off those parietal lobes here. And between the parietal and the temporal lobe, you have the insular lobe. And you can see that it has gyrene sulci, just like all the other lobes of the brain. You can still see longitudinal fissure here. Now, connecting the two hemispheres, you have a white matter tracks that go this way, all the way down, and this is your corpus callosum. Looks very different on this model, so make sure you can identify that. That's your corpus callosum there. You could even, well, on this one it doesn't matter. You can even see part of the corpus callosum here. And connecting those two halves of the brain together. In here you can also see the ventricles, the way they sit in the brain. That's one reason why I really love this brain is because it shows you the actual ventricles in the brain. The concept is kind of difficult, so this makes it a little bit easier. So these are your two lateral ventricles on either side. Now if I take this corpus callosum off, you'd have the septum pellucidum here, and then right underneath that you have the fornix. So if, if you look at this kind of sideways, you can see that there's like a little membrane hanging off of there. That would be part of the septum pellucidum, and that would go between the corpus callosum and the fornix. So corpus callosum fornix, lateral ventricles, insula, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, occipital lobe. Okay, now we'll look at cranial nerves. So this is the brain upside down. Here's my frontal lobe. Here's my temporal lobes. Here's my occipital lobe in the back. The first cranial nerve is olfactory, and it goes sits right underneath the underside of the frontal lobe. It has a little olfactory bulb on the end. So your olfactory receptors come up through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid and synapse here in that olfactory bulb and then the olfactory nerve and track take that information back to the brain. So here's cranial nerve one olfactory nerve. Be sure when you label cranial nerves on your quizzes and practicals that you always put the name and the number of the nerve. Now the rest of the nerves pretty much go in order. If you count down, remember there are 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So really all you have to do is count. There is one that is a little difficult to see, and that's cranial nerve 4. And I'll show you that in a second. But here's one, two, which is optic, three, oculomotor. Now, four, I have to take the temporal lobes off here. You can see coming around the side of the midbrain. Okay, so there's four, it's very thin comes from the back of the brain, wraps all the way around to the front. So one is oculomotor, I mean, sorry, olfactory. Two is optic. Now remember, optic nerve crosses right around the pituitary for optic chiasm. Makes that optic chiasm or cross. Right below the optic chiasm is the infundibulum, so your pituitary would hang off here. And next to that is the mammillary bodies. In this case, they're green. And then you have oculomotor cranial nerve 3. Cranial nerve 4 comes around the side. Then you have cranial nerve 5 here, sort of on that middle cerebellar peduncle. Now 6, 7, and 8 are in a line from middle or medial to lateral, so 6, 7, 8. Abducens, facial, vestibular cochlear. 9, 10, and 11 are also in a line. 9, 10, 11. 9 is glossopharyngeal, 10 is vagus, and 11 would be accessory. Cranial nerve 12, you have to go back up for, and it's right here in front of the medullary olive, and in this case, the olive is pink. So 9, 10, 11, 12. 
<coughs> so they're relatively in order. Let's go over those again. Olfactory is one. Optic is two. Here's your optic chiasm. Oculomotor is three. Abducens is four. Trigeminal is five. I'm sorry, four, that's trochlear, not abducens. So olfactory, one. Optic is two. Oculomotor is three. Trochlear is four. Trigeminal is five. Abducens is six. Facial is seven. Vestibular cochlear is eight. Glossopharyngeal is nine. Vagus is 10. Accessory is 11. Hypoglossal is 12 in front of the olive. Now on this brain, you can see very nicely the mammillary bodies because they're in green. The infundibulum is actually shown. You can see the cerebellar, I mean cerebral peduncles, excuse me, of the midbrain. You can see the medullary pyramids very well, as well as the olive. If we turn this around to the back, again we have those lateral ventricles, insula. You can see the caudate lobe, or the caudate nucleus, I'm sorry, the pineal gland, the corpora quadrigeminal, all four, one, two, three, four, two superior colliculus, two inferior colliculus. You can see a trochlear nerve from behind. You can see the superior cerebellar peduncle from the midbrain. You can see the middle cerebellar peduncle from the pons. And you can see the inferior cerebellar peduncle from the medulla oblongata. You can also see fourth ventricle here, as it should be. And if we open this up, You can see the corona radiata very nicely here. This is one of those deep brain nucleus. You can see the position of the ventricles, lateral ventricles here, third ventricles surrounding the diencephalon with the little hole for your interthalamic adhesion, cerebral aqueduct, and fourth ventricle. So this model is really nice to get kind of a really good feel of how everything works together here in the middle portion of the brain because it can be rather complicated. Okay, so I took the ventricles out so you can see the thalamus, the endothalamic adhesion in brown. This is mammillary body in green and you can see how it's going up to become the fornix because the fornix, remember, is a green structure. We saw it over here. <laughs> Here's your epithalamus, that little red line. Here's your pineal gland, cerebral aqueduct. So lots of really good structures in here. Again, here's that optic chiasm with optic nerve and your infundibulum, mammillary body, oculomotor. Looking at this piece, it looks kind of weird, but you can see where the lateral ventricles were removed. So all that space is lateral ventricle. Here's the corpus callosum. I took half of it off. Here's your fornix. It's going to go all the way down and wrap around into those temporal lobes. This is actually your parahippocampal gyrus. And your hippocampus is kind of this frilly looking end of uh, the fornix in this area here. And these, of course, are your temporal lobes here. Here and here.